The largest organ on the human body is our skin, which protects us from the immediate environment such as microbes and certain harmful plants. It also helps regulate water balance, body temperature, stores fats, produce hormones, and vitamin D3. The varying degrees of skin color has been a hotbed for human discrimination and divisiveness. So, how do our skin obtain its color? Our skin obtains its color from a polymer called melanin. Melanin is the primary determinant of skin color in humans currently present in the hair and the iris of the eyes, which are found in the bottom layer of the epidermis. Upon exposure to ultraviolet radiation, melanin production is increased, causing the skin to tan, and it has been long believed that dark skin pigmentation protects the body against the sun's harmful UV radiation. Skin color is an evolutionary adaption to the different levels of UV radiation to which humans were exposed to as they migrated over millennium. In regions of the world closest in proximity to the equator, people will have darker skin, and individuals further away from the equator will have lighter skin. People who live natively in India, for instance, have very dark skin, and people who live natively in Asia have lighter skin. The reason for this is because in specific regions of the world, UV radiation is more predominant, especially near the equator. A race is literally an illusion, an illusion derived from malformed observation, religious dogmatism, and ignorance of the cause of differing pigmentation and its necessity for synthesizing vitamin D. Nina Jablonski of the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco measured the UV radiation reaching the planet's surface in several countries, which level was exponentially diminished farther from the equator. She observed a correlation showing the weaker the UV radiation, the lighter the skin, as I described, due to the person's native region relative to the equator. Primitive humans had dark hair, covering lightly pigmented skin, and since early humans migrated out of Africa, which is close to the equator, they lost their hair, which consequentially substituted for dark skin. The gradual change in skin color was necessary to counter harmful radiation and the competing need to have sufficient UV radiation for vitamin D3 synthesis. Hey everyone, I'm Rila Sakawa and I'm going to tell you three common myths about melanin and skin color. Common myth number one, black people cannot get sunburn or skin cancer. According to SkinCancer.org, 63% of African Americans have never used sunscreen. Though it is true that the chances are less likely, it is still possible to get sunburn and skin cancer from UV rays. Having higher levels of melanin is like having natural SPF of 20. This just means you can withstand UV rays for 20 times longer than someone with fairer skin. This often gets misconstrued as being able to withstand UV rays indefinitely. The recommended average SPF sunscreen for everyone regardless of race is 30, but for someone with a darker complexion should wear at least a minimum of 10, this can be found in most cosmetics, and should be reapplied throughout the day. Signs of skin damage from UV rays can affect African Americans differently than people with fairer skin. Where white people show signs of aging, black people will develop patchy dispigmentation, often known as dark spots. Though it is less likely that black people will develop melanoma from UV rays, they are at higher risk of developing other forms of melanoma, particularly in the hands, feet, and under the nails. Number two, albinism only affects Caucasians. This myth has picked up steam in the past few years spread by black supremacists who believe in melanin theory, such as Tariq Nasheed. But the truth is, albinism can affect anyone, white, Asian, Hispanic, black, Albinism is a genetic defect that causes the absence or deformity of trisonase, a copper-containing enzyme that is involved in producing melanin. There are two types of albinism, one that affects the eyes, skin, and hair, and one that only affects the eyes. Common myth number three, only black people have melanin. I see this myth spread all over social media. Just go to Twitter, search melanin, and click on people and see how many have it listed in their bio as if it's some proud achievement. The truth is, everyone has melanin, even albinos. It's what allows white people to tan, have freckles, have color in their hair and eyes. In fact, over time, everyone loses melanin. You see it through your hair. As you age, it will turn gray and white. Well, that was my three common myths. I just want to say thank you to Secular TJ for inviting me to do this collab. It was fun.